Hello everyone, good afternoon, good morning, good evening. Welcome to the final lecture of the first IHF live online symposium. My name is Courtney Gayen and I'm the moderator for this session. If you've been joining us before, you know that we have four translation options available. We have French, Spanish, Arabic and Russian for this lecture. And you can use these if you're joining us on Zoom by clicking the globe icon at the bottom of your screen and choosing the label for your language. For Arabic users, please note you need to choose the label Chinese. This first IHF live online symposium forms part of the Virtual Academy recently introduced by the IHF to facilitate global online learning and licensing. And we are gonna hear more at the end of this lecture about the activities coming up in this regard. All of this falls under the umbrella of the IHF Education Center available at ihfeducation.ihf.info. This is the final lecture of the first IHF live symposium and we have had a total of 19 before this, which you can find on the IHF Education Center and the IHF Facebook page for on-demand viewing. This lecture this afternoon is from Chairman of the Playing Rules and Referees Commission, Ramon Galejo, and Chairman of the Co Commission for Coaching and Methods, Diedrich Sparta. And we are gonna be talking about game and rule development and new proposals, very interesting lecture. Please feel free to ask questions throughout and we will be addressing all of those at the end. And please note this is being recorded so you will be able to access it later. And so gentlemen, we're ready to begin. Okay, thank you, Corne. Dear humble friends, welcome to this uh, last uh, live seminar of the IHF Symposium for coaches, referees, and I think for in general, for all humble people. Today, we will discuss uh, about the development of the rules and development of humble in the past, today, and could be also a little bit discussion about, about the future. As, uh, we will show you how some specific, specific change in some moment of the history jump our humble to forward, jump our humble for a new humble. If we compare today uh, our humble or the humble just 12 years ago or another 12 years ago, it, they look like an absolutely different sport. The responsible, a few specific changes in the rules and later how the coaches manage this change. From my point of view, the rules and the coaches are essential for the future of our sport. I completely you agree with my idea. <laughs> yes, of course. Uh, at first, uh, uh, I will give you a short overview uh, about the structure of our presentation. Uh, at first, a uh, brief overview uh, of rule changes uh, since 1981. So we looking back around 40 years ago. Then second, uh, a very brief comments uh, on the development trends in our game in the last uh, 10 years. Very short, you find more information in the IHF Education Center. Then uh, important question, what are our goals uh, for rule changes in the future? And at the end, and that is the biggest topic, uh, a comprehensive presentation of all current ideas and proposals for rule changes, but not only for rule changes, also some modifications uh, or changes in the interpretation. So it's not always the topic rule changes. So uh, at first, look, we are looking back to the history and uh, I think Ramon, uh, 1981, I think you were already an active referee at this time. I got <laughs> <laughs> long, long time, long time ago. Yes, uh, in that moment, I was uh, just close, uh, go up to the first league in, in Spain. So, I mean, but it was a very important, uh, very important year about the, about yeah. the rules because it was the first time that uh, some change in the rule put order, order in the in the descriptions and in the, in the concept how to play handball. And then at the same time, they put order about the different qualification of the fouls and infractions, different fouls, different infraction, and then immediately different punishment. Rule eight and today rules, rule 16 in, the, in that moment, rule 17, the last rule of the rule. So it was uh, uh, to put, uh, the idea was to put order in our handball and was really, really a um, successful, successful change in that moment, I remember. Oh, four years later, yes, it looks that uh, the red car uh, have uh, lived always with us. No, 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 no. This was the first year that uh, in that moment, uh, 
the playing rules commission of IHF uh, uh, decide to to put inside our rules the disqualification and red card was absolutely necessary because it's not uh, the jump between uh, just two minutes and exclusion exclusion of a player was too 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 big and then uh, there are a, a lot of uh, situation not uh, not clear so disqualification of the red card in in 85 was uh, essential also for the future also in that moment the the new rule book was uh, added like something like guidelines today but in that moment the the name was uh, notes notes on the rules of the game it was very very interesting topics so it was uh, today the name is guidelines or clarifications 97 yeah, coming wow. yeah uh, i have to explain a little bit uh, 1997 <laughs> at this time i was a member of the ihf rule working group together uh, with uh, Juan de dios roman zeko former head coach uh, from the spanish national team and also later president of the spanish uh, handball federation also at this time uh, in this working group was the uh, uh, president of the plc coming from sweden eric elias and also one member from the plc uh, willy hacker from germany and I think these rule changes from 1997 uh, really made history a little bit. Yes, yes I the, agree. The yeah. new quick throw off was at this time uh, really a revolution. But uh, I think it's also interesting how the dis discussion uh, was at this time. I remember that many experts said uh, that we are were now destroying the game. Uh, and But after a few years, after adaptation, uh, especially from the coach's side, the game changed totally né, to this modern high-speed game. And I think it's a good example uh, for the discussion about rule changes. It's not a good idea uh, to discuss rule changes in an extreme way, not in a black and white discussion. Mm -hmm. uh, Correct. So that was a good example. So, But we, we had a little bit more. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yes, yes, yes. yes. Right. Uh, you, are, you are absolutely right, Dietrich. <laughs> Yeah, I, I think also for the quality in the in the game uh, that this was from now possible to jump after a lying or rolling uh, ball. Né? Uh, this creates a lot of new situations, and you uh, could see it also today in our game. Uh, remember our first uh, slide in the presentation that is fight for the ball. That was also an attractive idea at this uh, time, and also. The idea with the forewarning signal starts 1997, and also the idea of the team timeout. Mm -hmm. So this was really uh, an important step in the rule development. Yeah, Dietrich, from my point of view, I remember this uh, this uh, change because it was immediately after the Olympic Games in Atlanta, mm -hmm. and uh, my feeling in that moment was that uh, I remember the final match in Atlanta, of course, and then it was like a handball is uh, very fast sport. But only one year later, my opinion was absolutely different. Now this is a big, big, and this is a new handball. You know, like uh, there are, you, you come back a little, there are criti critical chains, like uh, the quick throw off or the, the for one for, for one signal for passive play. Uh, absolutely uh, uh, so important for the, even today, the yeah. quick throw off we discuss later is a rule, essential rule in our sport. Absolutely essential rule, not only good for players and the coaches, especially good for, for spectators. Even in that moment, I remember there were many discussions about the behavior of the coaches in the bench. And then uh, you agree, you agree that uh, uh, free movement of coaches, of coaches in, in the in the bench area. That was really a good good decision. Yeah. Right. Okay, coming to 2005. 2005, 2005. Uh, Yes, uh, one step more about uh, speed, about the speed. Immediately, remind this uh, immediately goalkeeper throw. Uh, in that, uh, until that, until this year, what uh, if a uh, attacker player touch the six meter line or enter in the goal area? The decision of the referee is was in that moment free throw. And then many times the, the, the goalkeeper had to run looking for the ball, maybe 10, uh, 10 or 15, 10 meters uh, far away, come back, and then execution of the, of the free throw. A lot of seconds lost. And then the decision of the commission was uh, to decide that uh, in any, in any uh, situation when the attacker uh, has, uh, are in a step, Inside Goleria, the decision should be an immediately goalkeeper throw. This was really uh, 10 times more speed and reach in, in our sport. 
plus a little bit about uh, uh, about the number of the players, our match report, marketing from the, to rise from 12 to 14 players. Okay, the next step was 2010. 2010 also, also a big, uh, the commission was, uh, the commission was uh, really, really, really hard job. I remember <laughs> I was inside. And then some uh, special rules, like uh, for example, yes, in, in, with the idea to uh, to protect the health of the players and to avoid uh, big injuries, like uh, we had seen until this year, that uh, the collision of the goalkeeper and, and a player when uh, the, the goalkeeper is out, was outside of the goal area, always to make the responsible to the goalkeeper to take care, not not crashes, not collision, to avoid the big injury. Also, the exclusion was replaced by the disqualification with report after the match. The same effect, but no more uh, exclusions for the players. And uh, was the first time that uh, special rule in the last minute. Today, we'll see later, last 30 second rule. In that moment, was uh, the last minute. Uh, it was a little bit different than today. We will we'll explain later. The thing time out number three. After uh, after agreement with all the all the coaches, of course, half time instead of ten minutes, fifty minutes at least in in top in top matches, and, and the free throw after final signal only one thrower, and we avoid a lot of problems when the six <laughs> six players or six or seven even the goalkeeper try to to shoot try to to fake something in that moment when the direct, direct final free throw. They just, we decided that only one thrower. And then again, increase due to the, the high development of handball to increase the number of players from 14 to 16, which was nice. Yeah, yeah. But, uh, one re short remark uh, still the free throw situation after final six uh, signal yeah. one against six. Maybe it's not optimal, but it's really uh, not easy to find better solutions. Uh, yeah. So we will discuss it uh, continuously. Still, with uh, still, it still was better, but still the, the question is open. Yeah. That's good. So then 2015, one important but, step, the video proof yes. system. Uh, new technologies was the first time that in IHF we used the video proof system. It was in the World Championship, in Men's World Championship in in Qatar. In that moment, not uh, like today, was good because uh, very interesting uh, situation, it, principally about the goals, goal or no goal, because the ball uh, entered or no enter, or because of the time. Yeah? And then also uh, some problems in the substitution zone uh, where uh, we, use, uh, we use the video. Uh, one big change compared to today, in that moment, the official of the match uh, was the responsible to see the video. But today, of course, the responsible to see the video always are the referees, except in some problems in the substitution area. But normally, uh, that's, that's correct decision later, that it should be the referees who decide uh, any kind of uh, situation after to see the video. So then, until now, the last changes in 2016. Uh -huh. The last five uh, important changes was in 2016 <coughs> before Olympic Games. First, uh, to change the possibility to change the goalkeeper for an additional core player. We have, uh, we have uh, seen the presentation of, uh, of the coach, Jalim Silla, just uh, one hour ago. And then the injured player rule for me this is this rule is look not uh, maybe looks not important for me it is is essential because we avoid a lot of interruptions a lot of interruption just to remind you that in the last two world champions in men's 2019 Germany Denmark and uh, in Kumamoto in Yana, the media the media of uh, times where the the play, the, the referees stop stop the match and order to enter a physio doctor was 0 0.9, 0 0.9 times. It means that only one interruption per match. In the past, maybe 20 or more. So for me, this rule is essential. Okay, the blue card, it means there is the same that the disqualification we report, but and then we announced to all the spectators that uh, in this situation, uh, some extra punishment is coming later. And uh, this, uh, the change in the last uh, 30 second rules, uh, 30 second rule. Uh, first was in, instead of after agreement discussion with the top coaches in, in the forum or IHF forum, I remember, was 2014, I think, yes. Denmark. Yes. yes. We agreed that uh, one minute is too much time, really, in handball, and then better only 
last 30 seconds. And also we agreed that uh, instead of uh, red card and uh, report for the guilty player, better, better to avoid unfair, unfair or big injuries or, or some uh, dangerous situation for the head of the players uh, to decide red card and seven meters decision. And then finally, <clears throat> the passive play, just to uh, looking for a more objective criteria for the referees. Yeah. Yes, uh, we decided that uh, after the four one signals, only six passes as maximum. Yeah, I think still uh, some uh, of these rules are in, in discussion uh, yes. today. We will yes. come back to yes, this yes. discussion Correct. Uh, in our presentation. Uh, so uh, we are going forward in our structure. Yeah. 2022 discussion and tests that is a current situation so mm -hmm. uh, we will give you later on a lot of information yes. so we come back about later. This. yes correct yeah. so then uh, some remarks uh, or a short over overview about some important uh, general tendencies uh, in our game maybe as a background information for you when we uh, discuss how we want to develop our game in which mm -hmm. direction so at first, uh, you see here an overview about the development uh, of the number of attacks since 2009. Uh, you can see this for both, for the men's and for the women's area. The uh, men's uh, area is the red line and the women's area is the green line. And you can see in general in the men's world championship, the number of attacks have dropped by around 12%. Uh, in the women's uh, uh, world championships, a little bit the same, but look at the end, uh, uh, the world championship uh, last year in Japan, uh, now the number uh, of uh, attacks are rising clear uh, up. I think uh, one of the most important reasons was the development in the high speed game, especially uh, in, in, the, uh, in the women's handball. We saw now the whole structure of the modern high speed game uh, quick throw off, permanence, 60 minutes, uh, and also fast breaks uh, in all three mm -hmm. phases. Yeah. So this is a, this is a clear uh, positive uh, trend. And uh, we think also one reason that uh, uh, the number of attacks in the men's area dropped a little bit uh, down. It, sure, this depends a little bit to uh, the development of the defense against the speed game, uh, that uh, uh, the quick retreat, retreat from attack to defense is better and better this day. So, what does it mean for the duration of attacks? This is an interesting question. Uh, the duration of attacks is a criteria for speed in our game and also for quick transitions from defense attack and attack to defense. So that is an attractive criteria. We think it's an attractive uh, criteria. And uh, look to the results uh, to the, in the men's area. In Sweden, 2011, we had 123 uh, uh, attacks uh, per match in the duration. Uh, that, this means at this time, we had an average uh, duration of attacks uh, under 30 seconds, under 30 seconds. So then uh, this developed a little, a little bit, the attacks, the number of attacks dropped a little bit down, but the current status in the men's area in the moment, more than 100 uh, attacks, this means 35.3 seconds in the duration of the attacks. So a short look to the women's <clears throat> area, nearly a little bit is the same tendency, only Japan now going up and uh, now we have a little bit of a difference between uh, men's and women's handball, 30.8 seconds uh, in Japan uh, in Japan last last year. So uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, in a current discussion, and I remember over the past 20 years, uh, a lot of experts uh, <coughs> from time to time ask us for so, the so-called shot clock. You know, the shot clock uh, coming from uh, basketball. In basketball, this rule was introduced to make the game faster, to make the game faster. That was the original idea uh, in the basketball. Uh, in, in handball, uh, the proposal was uh, uh, to have a shot clock after 45 seconds. So uh, 45 seconds means then our game, uh, we make it uh, uh, much slower when we're going back to 45 seconds. Uh, and Ramon with a shot clock may maybe we have some uh, more difficulties. Uh, 
a lot of more problems because uh, first um, the numbers are clear, the statistics is clear, so it's clear, absolutely clear for me. And from the referee side, we discussed many times, and uh, we put uh, a limit time of 45 seconds for zone. But inside this, this 45 seconds should be a possibility of passive play. So it means more problems for the referees and probably a more subjective criteria. The idea, what, what we are doing now is uh, uh, working with the referees about two topics. First, what happened before the signal to improve the knowledge, to improve uh, the, the understanding of handball of the referees, depend, depend on the match. And also later, what happened after the, after the signal, because it's not necessary always to wait until the six passes. Remind the presentation of uh, uh, the top coaches uh, from Denmark, getting uh, Gieding Hansen, also my colleague uh, Bjarne Jensen, about passive play. Clear, and they show us a lot of situations where the referees decide or should have decided a passive play before the six passes. So I think if we continue in this way, beside that uh, we reduce or not the number of passes, we continue in this working for sure. I think in the next in the next World Championship, this uh, duration of attacks will be reduced a little. So from our side, the referee side, we don't need this uh, maximum limit time per attack. And I, uh, the opinion is the same uh, uh, in our area. Uh, 45 seconds uh, short clock makes no sense. Uh, this will uh, be slower at first. And second, we copy uh, a different game. And I think it's important to have our own game uh, exactly. structure. I think that is very, uh, very important. Correct. OK. Correct. Here we have a really clear opinion. So <laughs> then uh, uh, a short look to the trends in the attack efficiency. That is a really, really, really positive uh, uh, result. Uh, around 20% uh, percent in, a, in the men's uh, area, the uh, attack efficiency rises up. Uh, a little, little bit the same, not so intensive uh, in, in the women's area, but this is really a criteria for more quality in, uh, in our attack. Uh, in our game, and I think one reason is the continuous improvement uh, in individual player profiles, uh, also mm -hmm. in a cooperative play, between, for example, between backcourt and pivot, these uh, uh, tactics are rising up, rising up in the last uh, few years. So that is really a positive result. Then, uh, one short remark to the number of uh, goals scored per uh, match you see this is not a big uh, difference uh, in the men's area. We have goals uh, uh, in a match in a level from 40, uh, 57 to 60. Uh, the women's handball a little bit more now uh, concerning to the result in Japan. But uh, uh, I think that is a uh, uh, really good result. All, also, a lot of people think too much goals in the game is also not so uh, uh, the main goal. So uh, I think we are here and on a good way. Here, if you let me, yes, these photos should be, you must send this uh, picture, the number of goals, to those people that think that uh, uh, Bumes Hamal is not attractive, Bumes yes. Hamal is not interesting, that they are not enough good players. Look at this. Look and co you can compare with the men's Hamal. More goals and fantastic goals and reads yes. and speed like the men's. Yeah. We are, we are also thinking that, that now the women's uh, handball has their unique game profile a little bit, not, not yeah. so much interruptions, yeah. not so much fouls, no, clear uh, development in a high speed yes. game. So that is a really yes. good development, especially really. in the women's handball. Correct. Good. Then uh, also for me, a really important ah. idea, the number of technical faults in, uh, in attack. Uh, and uh, here you see a really, really also a positive uh, trend, especially in the, in the men's area. When you have a look, uh, now we dropped down uh, uh, last year in Denmark, uh, Germany to 8.7 uh, technical faults per, per match and team. That is uh, really a big result. I remember the world champion uh, Denmark at 5.5 technical faults. Also to play with less uh, mistakes, that is also a really important task today and a uh, criteria for more quality in our game. So then, uh, this is a little bit a negative trend since some years. 
that the goalkeeper efficiency goes a little bit down around uh, 13 to uh, 15 uh, percent. One reason could be sure uh, the development in uh, throwing variations at the end on all positions in attack. That is sure one result, but I'm thinking also uh, it is important to develop uh, the cooperation goalkeeper defense more and more. This is an important key uh, uh, in the future. And also Mats Olson, uh, member of the CCM and uh, long years, really successful goalkeeper uh, coach, he always mentioned, now it is important that you save important balls in a very important moment as a goalkeeper. That is a little bit a change of the focus. But sure, uh, that was also for us an, one idea to have a focus more on the goalkeeper position, how we can develop also from rule changes, from modifications, how we can develop this position. We are coming back later to this. To this. <clears throat> Good. So uh, short uh, summary, uh, our game has developed dramatically uh, in the past 20 years, clear high-speed game. Uh, the individual player profiles uh, are still in progress. We can say still in progress. Uh, I think no, no end. Uh, also positive the tendency to flexible active defense. Sure, we have, and this is also very important for, for the image of our game. We have outstanding key players. They make the difference uh, in our game. And uh, also we have the trend now a little bit to quicker positional attacks. This is also positive. Yeah, so Ramon, what should we change in our game? I think that we cannot forget that uh, in that, that moment we have in our hands and uh, really excellent product, excellent sport in, in that moment. So uh, just we need to take care, we need uh, to see the situation, to, to see the development day by day, and uh, to decide if some small amendments in some rules could be even to, 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 to improve our world. But uh, we cannot forget the great successful of Humble in, in Olympic Games in Rio. Yes. Especially for from for people from the IOC, Olympic International Olympic Committee, from people of our sport that uh, uh, they came to handball every day. Many people that uh, they didn't know handball. Wow, you have an excellent sport. Why we didn't know it? Why not make my country this better? Also, we have the sport number two after football in number of spectators, in number of tickets. So, and then, sorry, we can, uh, I'm totally in front of the people that uh, they think that we need big, big change. Not, not at all. We need to take care, of course, of our product, and we need to decide when is necessary some amendments in some rules. Of course, this is okay. This is correct. This is our duty. Okay, then we're coming to the third point. Some ideas for goals for the future. <coughs> How we want to change our game? Yes, how to? This is our duty. Also, how to simplify the rules, the rules more easier to understand, better understanding for all, not only for for the referees. The referees understand the rules, but better understanding for players. This is absolutely necessary, and for the fans, for the spectators, for our people from the TV or social networks, and, like and this is possible. We are working in it to produce in 2022 the new books. We'll discuss later. Will be a little bit easier for all the people. Yeah, better understanding uh, means also uh, it would, would be good to have more objective criteria. But uh, uh, I, I always mentioned here uh, that it's not easy. Uh, 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 we, we are not, uh, when we compare to other sports, for example, the 100 meter sprints is very easy, <laughs> clear. <laughs> so uh, everything is fixed. Uh, 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 in a game like handball, it's uh, sure a little bit different. But we have some possibilities, and that we discussed in the last years. Uh, uh, we have some possibilities to create for some rules better uh, criteria. Sure, one focus is uh, on the passive uh, play. Here we can uh, create a better text, better criteria. Yes, uh, I agree with you, Dietrich, but uh, don't forget that the handball is a complex sport. It's not like football. Football is very yes. simple. It's very yeah. simple. But the handball is, is a sport of contact, a continuous contact between players. And then it's uh, in some rules, in some moments, it's really difficult to create objective criteria. But uh, I think we are improving. We are better than uh, 10 or 15 years ago. And we continue in this way. Yeah. So, and then uh, also we, we are constantly analyzing our, our games and always uh, we want to also to identify 
negative developments, negative yeah. trends. We, uh, in the one week ago, uh, we had a, this presentation about uh, provocations and overreactions. This is one result of our work in the last uh, years to search for negative trends and to think about how we can solve such problems. That's correct. Less interruption for me is critical in, in our sport. If uh, we must sell our sport totally different from the rest of the sports in the world, totally different. And then what we can sell to the people? Just uh, emotion and tension during 60 minutes, 60 minutes exactly. No time for uh, close the eyes. And then it means absolutely first, high speed, high risk until the last second, and then zero is possible, close to zero interruption. And then the spectators will leave our sport together with the, with the actors, together with the players. And uh, we have improved a lot, a lot in the last uh, five, six years, and we will continue in this way. Hard by fair, yes, of course, our sport is hard, but our players are ready for this kind of, uh, of characteristic, but fair. We need to, to promote, to shell our sport like uh, attractive, attractive sport, fair sport, hard but fair, hard but attractive. Because if not, we'll have no children. We we'll have no children, kids, uh, kids and uh, girls and boys uh, playing handball. And then this is true today. A lot of uh, sports, even new sports, today a lot of uh, leisure offered. And then we must uh, convince the boys and the parents that they, they can play humble, they can enjoy with humble. And this means also th that we have to protect the health of our players. That is also a really a general goal when we discuss uh, possible rule changes. Uh, yeah. One focus uh, we discussed, uh, uh, one focus will be uh, the goalkeeper. We are coming later uh, back to yeah. this uh, point. Correct. I think for around uh, two years, we started at first more internal uh, in the IHF, the discussion how we want to develop uh, our game. And we had the so-called intercommission uh, meeting. And uh, yeah, let me say as a, as a final conclusion, uh, we said at this time, one important goal for the discussion is, okay, uh, we need permanently a more attractive game. What can we do to make it a little bit more attractive? but we don't want to make a revolution, for example, like uh, 1997. This was uh, real, really no, no. a revolution. No, 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 definitely not. Yeah. So uh, then uh, we're coming to the important chapter four, an overview about the most important ideas, proposals, what we can develop. You see here, we have four different uh, sub chapters uh official tests then some remarks to uh, rule improvements then a very very big topic we are coming later to this uh, some new ideas uh, for ihf rule interpretation uh, and also what is in discussion mm -hmm. Got it. so this is your part <laughs> this is the three official tests uh, we are preparing for the next season before to approve or not to approve, to see the, the real experience in hundreds of matches in, in different countries. And now we will go one by one through off areas to review the six to, from six to four passes. And uh, what about the, the ball when the ball is uh, directly against the head of goalkeeper? Like, uh, so we go now one by one. This is the, you know, uh, uh, throw off area. Uh, as uh, we talked before, Fast or quick throw off is essential in our sport today for all for all the actors, but especially for the spectators, because they are they are shouting, they are waiting for another goal after one goal, another goal in three four seconds, and then when we approve this rule, was a big 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 change. But today we have some problems that you have here first, incorrect execution of many many throws, or the foot is not on the line, or maybe no line. Or the throw is running or jumping, or the the two wings are, are in, in the other part of the of the of the field, or the distance between the defender. Right? A special problem also when the one team, the defender team, in that moment, the blue team, for example, you, is using the rule of seven six, no goalkeeper. We have seen also a lot of uh, incorrect goals, for example. 
Oh, then, and then if the referees whistle every time that uh, there is an uh, incorrect uh, execution, and then we are fighting now against uh, too many, the idea of too many interruptions. Mm -hmm. So in general, all together, and then it means that uh, we have a, a, a problem with the throw of uh, execution. Yeah, and uh -huh. also this, is this, this picture shows a little bit also the, the problem uh, for the referees to observe each detail in this situation. Yeah. Don't forget, uh, in this situation, everyone is in high speed, is running. No? The attacking team, the uh, defending team, changing uh, uh, players, and also uh, uh, the referees have to run uh, to reach uh, an optimal yeah. position. It's really, mm -hmm. really difficult. Probably many of you. Every well, detail. <laughs> correct. Probably many of you knows that uh, we are uh, thinking uh, to test also the possibility to use three referees, three referees at least in, in top in top matches. This is one of the reasons, because normally only only with two referees here, one referee is running so fast to the to the other goal. The second referee is running also, but there are a lot of players, and then it's difficult for only one referee to manage these situations. And, Okay, Ramon, you can show uh, some video examples for this. Yes, I go then. You see the incorrect execution was not goal, but could be goal. Maybe in the future, maybe in the future, could this, be a execution, this yeah. execution could be correct. Yes. Could be correct. Think about that, we, we discuss later. Eh? But today, this is not okay. No, it's the same. In the future, could be nice, could be good, but today this is not correct. The player is not touching the center line. is uh, is running, is moving. So should be interruption, and then correction, and then this is also negative for example. Another special situation: goal, and the same. And goal, incorrect goal, clear incorrect goal. You will see. Here you see, it's sometimes it's difficult to observe for the referees. No, no, no. A lot of uh, players around a lot of the middle around. line, and it's yeah. difficult uh, to have a, a really good view. Again, the situation you see the after the goal, the next one. The player is running, the thrower is running. Can be. Maybe in the future also could be nice, could be good according to the rules but not today. Same. Now the referees make a correction because the player is not touching and is running. Good. An important match, Egypt, Germany. The final of the youth uh, final world championship. Of the, final of yeah. the youth world championship. Yeah. Germany playing with uh, without goalkeeper, correct, Dietrich? Yeah. Yes, of course. Uh, the the whole second half, uh, and uh, then it's very difficult no, uh, for uh, for the team which has to change uh, the goalkeeper back when the quick uh, uh, throw off uh, is uh, wrong. Got it. You see now, this is the goal of the uh, clear Egypt. disadvantage. Yes, and, uh, and now, and now, this is even yes. Yeah. Now, this is the, the action. That's absolutely not. Yeah, absolutely not. 
here was not goal, but uh, I remember one or two goals. Yeah, at yeah, least. yeah. At least. And that is a real disadvantage. Exactly. So here, goal. And look the player of uh, Korea. Korea. Yeah. Look again, the player of Korea. Yeah. <laughs> now this is the junior world championship, right? Yeah. Exactly. The same. First, the wing was in the in the other part of the field. Was the very the very last, you know, the, the score 25. You know, this critical goal 25-25, six seconds only to the end. Goal of uh, Jap of uh, Tunisia, and now Japan in, in attack. Wrong execution, and was goal, but uh, outside of the time, but uh, for fortunately, but could be a critical goal. Yeah, right? could be decided again, so. Exactly. So now I give to you the time. Now you continue, Dietrich. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So that is uh, uh, the idea, uh, a so-called new throw off area. At first, uh, before Ramon goes to the detail, I want to explain only the, on the left side the picture. Uh, the, the red circle is uh, only uh, uh, to, to focus a little bit to the situation that is not the throw of area. But interesting, have a look to the floor. You see the circle for advertising uh, on the floor, and that could be maybe a little bit bigger. Ramon will explain this. Could be in the future this new throw off area. And in this situation, you can see very clear that could be the situation. The, the thrower and one teammate uh, also in the throw of area is possible, and the defender around. So, mm -hmm. the idea is uh, a little bit easier rule, easy, easy for the players, easy for the trainers, easy for the spectator, easy for the referees, less interruptions, and not, uh, not more uh, wrong execution or incorrect goals. And then the idea is, uh, you have seen now in the last examples, that uh, the majority of these examples, these videos we have shown you, were correct. If the defender, the attacker is inside the circle, the thrower, with teammates or not, and the rest of the, the, rest of the players, the defenders are outside the circle. Circle between, between 3.5 and 4.5 meters diameter, we need to test, about four, about four could be nice. And then the throw off, I explained you here, is taken from any position with both feet. I must, uh, I'm the thrower, I must be inside this, uh, this circle in any direction, correct? And this is like today, one part of my foot in principle uh, in constant contact with the, with the floor. But the rules for this, uh, look, uh, wait a moment, uh, Dietrich. Here, the rules for Denise throw off will be under the same rules as the goalkeeper throw. Under yeah. the same rules and the goalkeeper throw. It means that the, the red players here uh, cannot uh, push the hands, put uh, their hands inside the circle, like uh, today in the goalkeeper throw. Uh, they must let that the ball leave the goalkeeper throw. All right? But in principle, it looks, it looks uh, easier. It looks like uh, less incorrect uh, execution. It looks like... Uh, uh, great, more speed, probably new tactics, probably new tactics. I don't know, Dietrich, what you've seen, but probably. And at the end, less mistake than today. Yeah, it's important. We had a, ni a nice discussion in a rule working group. Uh, maybe it's uh, also for a better understanding uh, in the future, uh, better to, <coughs> to divide between areas, uh, goalkeeper area, throw off area, and lines, side lines, yeah. middle line, and uh, whatever. Uh? Correct. So, so I think for the understanding, that is uh, not so bad. Yeah. So the next, the teammates oh, this of the is, thrower, yeah, this yes, is clear. I told you, the teammates must be outside the circle. Yeah. All right. Until the, the signal. Or this is correct. This is clear. So I, I explained yeah. to you. So this is yeah. And and then uh, the behavior of defenders that is also very clear uh, and must be outside until the thrower has been executed. This means when the ball has left the hand of the thrower. That's the oh, criteria yeah. we also have in different exactly. other uh, rules. 
uh, so, everyone knows this. Right? Exactly. So the, the defenders cannot uh, touch the ball until the ball has complete cross the line or the ball is passed to another teammate and then they can they can enter, they can do something. Right? Yeah. So it looks in principle uh, as more simple rule, more simple rule, easier perception for not only for referees, for referees and for players and for spectators. And one remark more in the direction of coaches. Uh, clear, uh, 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 this means uh, that the quick throw off will be even faster even in faster, the future. Correct. Even faster. That is uh, uh, clear. But we will see it in the test how it, it works. It? Okay. So then the second uh, uh, test change from six to four passes after the forewarning signal is shown. Interesting, this proposal uh, was coming from the coach's side. <coughs> I, I remember one of the first uh, coaches uh, was uh, Valero Rivera. You know him, one of the most successful coaches in the world. Uh, uh, long years now, uh, in uh, coach from Qatar, 2013 world champion uh, with the Spanish team. And uh, uh, Qatar made at this time some years ago uh, the, uh, a lot of analysis and then he said, it is possible. It is possible to reduce uh, mm -hmm. the number of passes. Yeah. yeah, the statistics with the help of the research couple, we can prepare these statistics. And you see that uh, the media of number of passes necessary after each for, for one signal. In the last uh, junior world champions in Spain, only media 2.5, 2.5 passes. In the women's uh, world champions in Japan, 2.5. The same, and in the men's world championship, Denmark and German, 2.9. But it was interesting that uh, how many times uh, uh, the teams needed less than four or use less than four passes. In the 82 percent of the times, they didn't need more than four passes. So this is interesting, and that's the why, uh, in general, the, the coaches asked to us to reduce to reduce this uh, this number of passes. So, and then the goal is clear to avoid longer attacks, uh, to have more quicker transition uh, between attack and defense, defense attack, and also to reduce uh, uh, some interruptions. But uh, Ramon, you must explain also a discussion uh, we had in a rule working group uh, for an additional rule change. Yes, yes because today, uh, okay, it's written. When uh, we wrote, uh, uh, we decided this, uh, this change in, in the past, but uh, uh, today, for example, the idea, where our idea is to delete this uh, special situation. Today, for example, after six passes, after six passes, I kept the ball, I shot goal, and then there is an excellent performance of the defender team, blocked, blocked the shot, the ball is coming to me, and then I have an additional pass plus the shot plus new new short and it looks like the, this is absolutely uh, negative or like a punishment for the defender team <laughs> that the, instead of a foul they block the time and then now i have an additional pass for me this uh, special situation after six passes will be deleted this is our idea to delete this in the future and just to decide uh, uh, often uh, passive play free throw for the defender team so it means uh, this a little bit also a little bit help to reduce the duration of the attacks in the future. Yeah, uh, this means maybe this could be a yeah. solution for the for the future. For sure. To delete yeah. this. Yeah, correct. So then uh, only one uh, uh, short uh, words for introduction uh, to this uh, proposal. For me, uh, what was really important uh, to have from the beginning and a really good expert for goalkeeper training in our uh, new CCM. Uh, and for different reasons, to develop the goalkeeper uh, game in general, to analyze uh, what can we do, question of rule changes or modifications, and also to develop the, the so important uh, today, the goalkeeper coach uh, education. And for me, one of the best, maybe the best is Shua Mats Olsen, uh, long years goalkeeper coach uh, for, uh, in the women's team from Norway and also in the men's team from Sweden. And he made a lot of really good uh, proposals. And uh, this was also his idea that he said in the current rule, the criteria goalkeeper is not moving in a seven meter situation is for him not practical. Then mm -hmm. for this uh, <clears throat> and for also other reasons, uh, we created some new ideas. 
Let's, uh, we repeat again, like uh, some minutes ago, we, uh, we spoke with you, uh, one of the targets of the rules and the referees and our target is to, to take care of the health of the players, to promote our sport in an att attractive way. And then uh, always I was worried uh, about the, how many times in the humble life of a goalkeeper, how many times goalkeeper, men or women, they receive uh, the impact, a shot in, in the head. How many times in training or in matches? During uh, 15, 20 years, thousands of times. And what about this? I have discussed today the, in, the last, in the last month with um, many former goalkeepers. And they told to me that uh, some of them are a little bit worried, a little bit worried about that. And then at the same time, this uh, documentary of the BBC about dementia in football, and uh, put the players and put the focus in the, one of the best uh, players and one of the best scorers in the world, uh, all times, Alan Shearer. And now only he's uh, 47 years old only. And he has a big problem of memory, big problem of memory. He's in the, under, uh, take, uh, under uh, care, care of uh, doctors, special, especially special doctors in the hospital. And they are so worried about the future of uh, Alan Sider. And then this documentary, uh, this document is really uh, of, um, a great impact. I show it and then this is, uh, so I think it's time to, to, to help our, our, our in general our players, but especially our goalkeepers. So I think we can have a look about some videos. Scenes. Yes, yes. Wait a moment. Yeah, this is a normal scene uh, yep. until today uh, in a rule book. Seven meter, not a hard shot, but a little bit on the head. Look at the score, as I said. He knows he's missed one. Oh, and she's caught the goalkeeper. And straight up, and there's a discussion here because if that is. Uh, Deemed to have been intentional. She tried to put a bit of spin on it. Yeah. And instead, she caught Sedoikina on the side. That is a question. She could yeah. be in trouble. The referees have yeah, that, As to today, the, the rule is written no matter the, 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 the speed yeah. or the strength of the, of the ball, of the shot. Yeah. Yes, how. And there's only here close to the to the air, but it's yeah. enough according with the rules. Look at the information, the body language of the players is <laughs> really good. And the, the red card is, is correct. Even in this case, this is with the spin shot, but it's enough for red card. But the look now, not seven meters, just some situation during the play, normal play. Yeah. And very often you can see it on the, on the wing positions, uh, also so, so called free uh, throwing situations, yep. uh, also from the pivot position or during fast breaks. And a lot of strength here, eh? a lot. Yeah. Look, wow, similar situation. But according with the rules today, this is, is absolutely nothing. Play on. Yeah. According with the rules. And the sometimes these shots play. are really, really hard. Yeah, really hard. Does. Really yeah. hard. Yeah. So, so in that moment, this decision of red card was absolutely wrong. And the coach is, <laughs> is right. Yeah. According with the rules, current rules today, this is play on. Right, so we have absolutely two different uh, two, two different corners for discussion. <laughs> right. Also here, look for example, start same. A really short distance. Yeah, uh, the throwers are absolutely free. 
no yeah. foul, no pushing, no holding, no hitting, absolutely free. And they send the ball directly against the, the head of the goalkeeper. Also, yeah. Also, really? the situation was very famous. Was in the yeah. European uh, Championship, but according with the rules today, this is absolutely, absolutely play on, absolutely nothing. We cannot punish this player number fifteen with the current rules today. Yeah, and that that was the idea to discuss a little bit a better line. Maybe exactly. red card. Is sometimes too much in a seven meter situations, but That's nothing it. for such uh, situ situations like this. This is at the end impossible, and that was an idea to for a new proposal coming from Mats Olsen. Exactly. What we discussed with the top coaches or the, the the coaches of the national teams in the, in the in January when the last yeah. uh, continental championship was about this to find a medium point. Mm -hmm. Okay, maybe a red card in the seven meters uh, situation could be too hard, but maybe nothing in, the, in, this, in this example could be really close to some, uh, something worried. Why not to find a medium point? Yeah. And in general, they, in general, the majority agree with, uh, with the idea. we we'll discuss now in yeah. one minute. Not? Okay. Yeah, this is a real exception. Yeah. Uh, 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 we will explain it. This is uh, not a free throwing situation. That is a clear foul uh, by the defender, and then you cannot do this. Exactly. For example, also here, number 14 in defense uh, is pushing mm -hmm. to the attacker, and then we cannot uh, think that the attacker is guilty or nothing, no? because I'm pushing him now, and then mm -hmm. this is totally different. The question is to discuss when the attacker is absolutely free. Then you destroy a little bit the balance, uh, uh, the exactly. body control, uh, and then could be possible. Exactly. Could be. So now the trick. So continue. now we are going back. Yes. So what are the ideas? Uh, I, I think uh, one one idea was aimed to find a better line, and this is a concrete yeah. proposal. Yeah. All right. All right. And then the idea of fundamental is that uh, the responsibility is for the thrower, not mm -hmm. to hit uh, the head of the goalkeeper. He is responsible. Sometimes the goalkeeper is responsible, for example, when he leaves the goal area and provokes a crash or a collision with the attacker. No, now the, resp the responsible is the thrower. And then included the seven meters, seven meters shooter or shooter uh, the shoot during play. And then the idea is instead of red car, Two minutes suspension when the, there is a seven meters against the, the ball is against the, the head of the goalkeeper, but also two minutes suspension in play when without any kind of foul, the ball is directly against the goalkeeper. And then we find a medium point for both uh, subtopics. Yeah. And I think it's also a good idea uh, uh, and a good signal also for the youth screen for the education of younger yeah. players. No? The thrower is responsible. Uh, when he hit the goalkeeper's head. Uh, and, and I think that is a, a good point also for the education of younger players. Mm -hmm. So that was uh, the three uh, proposals for tests. Now we're coming uh, to the second part, IHF rule improvements. Mm -hmm. uh, and we, here we have some, some points, uh, progressive punishment, provocation, overreaction. We spoke about this, 
electronic devices, interesting for coaches, and also some ideas how to reduce interruptions. So, concept for progressive punishment, that is yours. Okay, in the first, uh, my first presentation, uh, when uh, we opened the, the symposium, I explained you clearly the, the modern, modern uh, referring line, how to use the yellow cards, how to, how to use the two minute suspension, how to use the red cards. So now they've uh, just uh, some statistics about that. You see in the last uh, World Championship of Olympic Games, more or less the number, the number of suspension, the media of number of suspension, more or less is the same. Uh, to reduce a little, but uh, at the same time, I must tell you that uh, the behavior of the team is better and better and better. The styling defenders in the in, in the, the uh, for the defenders, the tactic are better, not so hard or not so violent like uh, many years ago. So it means that the defenders are better in general in the teams. The referees maintain the line about two minutes suspension from the direct two minutes suspension from the first attack and less using of uh, yellow cars later. So it means that uh, we are in a, in a good way and that the teams understood the modern referring line. So about two minutes suspension. Yeah. And then now about uh, yellow cars, that is the next, uh, the next slide. Yeah. Also I explained to you like uh, how we are working with the, with the referees about yellow cars. Yellow car is, is not a real punishment, it's an information. It's an information about what, about something that the players know. So we, I cannot abuse of the information. Yes, one, two times could be unnecessary. And then, uh, for example, I must avoid, it's clear, more than anything. We must avoid yellow cards after a goal. Yellow cards means information. Why I stop the match? Why I stop fast throw off? Because an information. No, I have a, a lot of possibilities to send information. So it means that uh, the IHL referees have uh, understood clearly the message and this new idea. Also in general, general the teams, they understand. And this is, uh, you can uh, take a view of the statistics of the yellow cards used by the referees, right? You see from six in, in men's, Qatar 2015, six in the past, the criteria in the past, I received this criteria. Ramon, you must use six yellow cards in all the matches because this is six situations you can prevent. No, today this is absolutely, absolutely very, very old style, very old style. Right? And then now in the men's world championship, we have reduced year by year, competition by competition, six from two, five to six from two, four, and to 3.3 in the men's the last men's world championship in uh, in the in the women's even more even more maybe because of the detail you talk about the characteristics of the of the women's of the women's team the women's handball from 5.8 and now in japan the medium was 1.8 the medium was 1.8 was really really interesting. and they didn't forgot any yellow card they didn't forgot and the referees were able to manage all the matches uh, under control so it means it was a successful, successful uh, criteria, successful idea about modern, modern referring style. And yeah. this is the line for the future, okay? But I would recall, you know, they have, uh, maybe together we can explain a little, we can discuss uh, why much more red cars in, in men's than in women. Even they forgot, they forgot uh, the referees uh, were 25 correct red cars. Nice. We started in Qatar with 14, 13, 15, and now a big jump in Germany, Denmark to 25. Even the, the referees forgot maybe six, seven more. So it means that uh, now the referees uh, uh, are absolutely fully concentration in the, the hard and negative actions that they put under danger the health of the players. Cannot be. And then they show, uh, you see, from 10, 10 red cards more than in the last World Championship, and they still they forgot uh, six, seven, eight that uh, should be. But in women's, we reduce, the referees reduce the number of, uh, of red cards. I think that the response was that uh, the players uh, were, uh, the behavior of the players were better, were better, because I can discuss maybe one or two, one or two, the referees forget one or two in 96 matches, uh, 96 matches it's, it's absolutely nothing. So we have a clear uh, different uh, behavior about uh, about fouls, about the strong fouls in men's and in women. Yeah. So we know. can 
in discussion, only in discussion. Only uh, discussion. Three points. Yes, yes three points. I, we discussed these points with the with the trainers of the national teams in, in last January to reduce from three to two, from three to two, or to delay to the yellow cards. I think the idea is uh, this is uh, in principle this is the favorite idea in principle. This is a signal. Three to two is nothing, yes, but it's a signal for all the people and for the referees especially. It's under discussion to extend the two minute suspension instead to three to four, and then. Uh, after three today, after this suspension should be the red card disqualification. It's an only discussion. All in discussion, some ideas is some suspension could be for three minutes. Just discussion. Only for Nothing discussion. Only yeah. discussion, but not uh, not uh, not not decision in absolute. Only the first point, more or less, is uh, under the clear, clear. I think clear decision for the future. Yeah. And I think it's also to mention again. We don't want to, to delete the fundamental idea of progressive punishment. No, 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 no. no, no. That is very important to, no, no, to no, no. point it out uh, at this time. Okay, then for provocation overreaction in general, we explained it. That are the possible uh, solutions for the next uh, years. Direct uh, two minutes uh, suspensions using video proof. We explained this in our presentation. And sure, if we don't have success, we have to think about a new system with three referees. We will explain it later on. Yes, we we'll discuss later a little bit more about three referees. Yeah, small uh, developments. Uh, you can explain, Ramon, shortly. Just uh, today, we approved the use of uh, the possibility to use uh, technical devices in the, in the bench institution area, like in many other sports. And uh, we, are to we, talk, uh, we are here, we talk about uh, the advance of the technology. So why not to use the modern technology and uh, electronic uh, devices in the, in the benches? Some teams are using it, uh, but, uh, but uh, another team not. Uh, of course, smart, uh, smartphones or tablets or iPads or small PCs, maybe 13 inches could be, but uh, not, co not communication with uh, uh, suspended official or players, yes, as well. And then they can use uh, these uh, devices during team time out or during the match. You call a player, the coach call a player and show him a yeah, look, look, and do something. Even we are thinking for the referees during team time out to show one situation for the referees when yes. the, the local, the, you know, for example, look about your nothing, nothing against a uh, mistake. You have uh, look, player, the referee about your position, your position as goal referee, as a field referee. Uh, when uh, this attack uh, is, uh, or this team is using attack uh, five to one or two pivots or three pivots or some, something like that could be possible. Also in the break time and immediately, immediately after the match. Yeah, Welcome. Well, you know, uh, you know, Ramon, we developed uh, the referee education during World Championships a lot yeah. uh, in the last years. Uh, yeah. uh, permanent uh, preparation, also tactical preparation uh, for correct. the next games, also special preparation for the final. Uh, games at the end of a world championship so it's similar what we are doing uh, to what coaches are doing in the preparation for games and this nice. is also a, a possibility for the future i think why that not, uh, why not? all the people in the world championship knows how the referees in IHS, how they work very hard 24 hours per day during a world championship how they work they are really more than professionals they know they are not professional but the, their behavior is like a real real professional 24 hours per day right so, and then there's uh, some ideas uh, that uh, we are we are doing yet to again to reduce interruptions the same topic very important topics minimum interruption and each interruption a minimum time for example in the last world championship we have uh, we have used five balls reserve balls one at the table and four balls in a special column in the corners what is the idea in case of necessary to change the ball, the, the referees uh, don't don't uh, lose time just one two seconds it depends on who is the who is the reset ball uh, closer to him, they change the ball immediately. Also towels in the goal area. The goalkeepers have a small towel, it's allowed. We give him the towel close to him, close to the post. And then also during the, the attack of his in, he can, he can clean his, uh, his, uh, his area. Close when the, he has the, the feet, right? Okay. And then we are thinking in, uh, in other chains, how also each chain in the rules, don't forget the one of the targets is, is to reduce interruption in the match. Okay, 
So now we are coming uh, to the third part, to um, the, uh, the development of IHF rule interpretations. And in general, uh, clear goals for the next rule book uh, is a better explanation. And if it is possible, more objective criteria. Yep. And in a focus is clear, a better explanation for passive play, uh, also for attacker faults, and sure, also a better explanation in one-on-one -on -one actions, duels, on in all areas, especially a focus uh, along the six meter line. Correct. So, and the main idea, how we want to do this? The, the main idea is the new concept for three rule books. Yes, yesterday, uh, my colleague, Tono Welling, explained you about uh, the task, the duties of the rules working group for, of IHF, a lot of that. One of the tasks is this. Uh, we agreed that to create, instead of one, to create three rule books. We are in the idea of uh, FIFA and FIBA uh, together, eh? because they they are copy of uh, some of our ideas also. Rule number one, like today, this is the main rules, 18 rules, mandatory hand signals of the referees, the equipment, forbidden equipment, not the, the marketing equipment about the colors, and the substitutional regulation. So it means more or less the same book that today, but uh, a little bit less less pages. Rule book two, this is the critical book for us. It means that the IHF rules, interpretations, guidelines, and clarifications. Interpretation, guidelines, and clarification. With clear examples, pictures, photos, and videos. Yes. Yeah. And videos that uh, any one of us can use, uh, can see immediately with the uh, QR codes, like a modern, not only good for young people, <laughs> it's nice, but also for us, <laughs> right? And then you have, you can read some guideline about the goalkeeper, for example, outside the goal area in a collision, and immediately with the QR codes, you can see one or two or three videos. So it means that uh, easier to understand the rules for all people around the world, and then no uh, excuses to use a different line different understanding line in different continents or in different countries. Only one line, interpretation line about the rules, the, the IHF line. So the rules book two will be the, the key of the success for the, for the next years. And rule book three also, okay, other uh, equipment regulations, other hand signers, non-mandatory guidelines like today for uh, constructions of cards and, and goals. The rules for the video proof that could be, we can change every year, for example, maybe not essential. Electronic in and out when the, we have the, the buzzer and other, other teaching material. This rule book three could be implemented, added in additional information uh, when this necessary. And not, not uh, necessary to print. And could be printed, why not? But uh, just to, to read uh, could be is enough. And of course, a special IHL rule book for Humble and School. This is for you, Dietrich. Yeah, yes, also. Uh, in general, we have in the future four, four rule books also uh, for the handball at school. But for me, the most important project in IHF uh, is sure this IHF rule book two official uh, IHF rule interpretation. Uh, some of the goals uh, was mentioned by, by Ramon. Important is to understand what we are doing here. Uh, it is a clear explanation of different technical, tactical situations, duels in all areas, clear explanation with concrete criteria, what is allowed and what is not allowed. For example, in the du duel, you see it here in, on the left uh, side in the pictures, uh, the duel between the pivot and the defender in different situations, then it is clear written what is allowed, what is not allowed, and how the referees have to act. And then, then that is the idea, then we have a uniform training of referees and a uniform rule interpretation for all. Uh, and how we want to do this, uh, Ramon mentioned, okay, we will use, uh, uh, sure, a traditional uh, printed rule book mm -hmm. on the left right. side, uh, right. but uh, with so-called QR codes, Codes. We have really good experience uh, with this method. So immediately you have the video when you uh, 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 look with your mobile phone uh, and scan uh, on the QR code, you immediately have the video in your mobile phone. 
But that is very clear, that's not enough uh, in our modern days. Uh, we need also a special app for uh, different devices. Yeah. Uh, and uh, one more advantage is also important. We can update it very quickly. So the idea is uh, to create updates, uh, additional remarks uh, or <clears throat> modifications every year. So then we are really in the interpretation, in the rule interpretation up to date. So it is a, at yeah. the end, it is a tool, uh, <coughs> not only for the referees, not only for the coaches. No. Mm -hmm. I'm thinking also with the app for the players, if it is attractive, more videos, uh, not so much written text. Uh, that is also nice to use it uh, in the in education of players, especially in the talent training. And at the end, also for spectators or for our journalists mm -hmm. to have a better understanding of our game. So mm -hmm. this is really, a key, a big <laughs> step forward. Yes, yes, I like that. So then, uh, what is in discussion? A lot of things are in discussion. Uh, here, a short overview, what we want to, uh, uh, to point it out a little bit. Clear, uh, seven against six, we have a lot of controversial discussions. Uh, it is always better to look at first to the facts, and I will do it uh, in a really quick overview. You see here the analysis of seven against six attacks in all 96 matches in the Men's World Championship last year in Germany, uh, Denmark. And on the left side, you, you see all, only 3.86% of all attacks were played seven against six. Uh, so uh, this means under 5%, not so much. Uh, on the other side, you'll see how many goals uh, were scored uh, with seven against six, only 3.59 uh, goals. This means two goals in a duration per match were scored with seven against six. This is not so much. And also important on the left side down, you see the efficiency. We compared uh, the efficiency of seven against six attacks with all other normal attacks. And you see it is a clear uh, difference. The attacks uh, uh, of all other attacks uh, uh, are much more uh, successful than the attacks uh, with seven against six. So a little bit mm -hmm. quicker, nearly the same result uh, in, in the women's area. Uh, also, you can see here a little bit more 4.5% uh, were played with, uh, from all attacks were played with seven against six. Uh, four percent uh, goals were scored with seven against six, and also a really big difference in efficiency when you compare seven against six to all other attacks. And the same result, but less uh, in in the youth and junior area. You see, only two point three four percent were played uh, with seven against six in the US World Championship, for example, the same result uh, in Spain. So uh, this means that these facts is show very clear that seven against six in the moment is uh, not a big topic uh, in our game. Uh, you can receive a lot of uh, more results, uh, deeper analysis in the IHF Education Center. We made a lot of an analysis, uh, especially for seven against six, six against six without goalkeeper. You find a lot of additional information in the Education Center. So what does it mean? A short uh, summary, seven against six in a moment, play is not a significant role in our World Championships, isn't it successful? May one reason could be also the psychological pressure when you, when you are in attack and you have in your back an empty goal. Uh, that is one one reason. Different reasons. Uh, uh, we could observe that uh, some teams, also the top team, using seven against six only in special situations, only in special situations, maybe at the end of the game. And also, uh, this is an important uh, remark. Um, some experts uh, thinking that seven against, is seven against six uh, will change our structure, but that's not true. Uh, <coughs> it is the same structure at the end, uh, which uh, we could observed long years ago, in, uh, in especially in numerical superiority situations. We have a clear trend now in our game with reduction of forward movements, uh, backup players act closer to the defense, 
and the goal is explosive and dangerous from short moves. That is really an, uh, an important observation. It's a clear development uh, and not a special development coming from seven against six. Yeah. And at the end, the only discussion, and we have to discuss this six against six without a goalkeeper, the value of two minutes. Just tell me, Dietrich, the opportunity that um, to tell something about this. First, about the general, our seven is against six. We are working with the referees just to observe if really when the situation seven is like seen, the attacker is uh, the attack is slower, slower or not about passive play. Just discussion of passive play is open and we are working with the referees. Finish, no more. All right. But about this, um, the opinion of some coaches, not all, some coaches think that uh, the value of the this uh, two minute suspension is, is not the same. Uh, I'm okay, it's an open discussion, but uh, I'm not sure because uh, first uh, empty goals, first two minutes is two minutes, finish. Yeah. And then the player knows that I have one suspension or two suspensions. So first, second question, uh, empty goal. What means empty goal? And there is then passive play possibilities when the, you have uh, about the, the, you have not a real attack. Then goalkeeper running back and forward. Yeah. And then a lot of substitution fouls. So it means that uh, during this two minute suspension, there are a lot of, uh, a lot of uh, situations, a lot of subtopics. Not only the topic of the, the value of the two minutes suspension, a lot of subtopics that all together means uh, different risk for the team that decide to play without goalkeeper. So for me, the value of the two minutes suspension is still is still exists, right? Yes. Okay, then uh, some ideas to use the video proof system in the future. Yes, you know that today. Uh, we have some uh, procedure for the video proof system. We have some uh, extreme procedure and uh, very clear situations, not too many, very clear situations when the, the referees must uh, stop the match and go to see the video without, without avoiding a lot of interruption. In general, there is a goal, goal or no goal, because the, the ball situation, because of the final, final signal, or if, if the ball entered or not entered. And then in one situation, it's for ref red or blue not this is for red it is for red the, the, the referees must decide red and then later to see if this red or uh, could be blue could the blue card and then of course substitution uh, uh, wrong substitution clear but also when something serious and dangerous action happen outside of the view outside of the field of view of the referees and then we must go to the, the in general this is uh, the video team is preventive it's preventive. Uh, I must tell you that uh, the last men's world championship, I remember, the last men's world championship, we have uh, nine, I think nine, ten situations where it's possible to 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 see the video like uh, like this. You can hear plus something about the last something about the last thirty second rules, uh, and then in ninety six matches, in ninety six matches, I think was only twenty one times, twenty one times. At, we didn't miss any situation. Uh, nothing special in the last 30 or so. Nothing uh, really unfair or violence or harness against a uh, player. So it means the effect of the video proof clear is preventive. So some ideas how some we ideas can use we it to, in the future? Just uh, probably something more about last 30 seconds situation to avoid mistakes that it could be, could be that, uh, critical for the final score in the last 30 seconds. Could be this. And then uh, discussion is, uh, we, we have talked with the, with the coaches. The coaches yeah. If it uh, could be this uh, challenge for the, the coach, <laughs> the <laughs> challenge could be one possibility for the coaches to use to, to ask for a video proof instead of a team timeout. Or not? The discussion is open. Uh, if it's interesting uh, from the point of view of, of Hamal, of, uh, of the better for Hamal, or not? Or not? Uh, we need the test, of course. We need test. Yeah, and we need and, to discuss with the good coaches eh? more and yeah, more and more. Yeah, that that's at first, but but clear is we have to avoid too much uh, interruption. So it was a good idea. Then, as a coach, you have to give one team timeout back. So that is one idea. Yeah, the free throw uh, execution. I think uh, yeah. Ramon, uh, that is a uh, proposal coming 
at the same time from the referees and also from exactly. coaches. At the same time, it's from some uh, of our top, top, really top uh, IHS referees, and some uh, at the same time, but in different ways, not together. Eh? Yeah, yeah. From some uh, top, top, top trainers of national teams and for clubs, the best clubs in the world also. And then what's the, the situation? We know the situation. The one team is attack in attack, and the, re the referee whistle offensive foul, for example. And then, but in that moment, the attacker passed the ball to a teammate, three, four, five meters far away. And then the ball is outside. And then it's necessary uh, to make the execution in the correct place of the of the violation of the foul. And then we uh, lose. We uh, takes a lot of time, a lot of time for that. And then the proposal and the referees, uh, especially the referees, they think that this is better for them to execute the free throw where the ball, where the defender catches the ball after this situation. More speed is written here. Clive. More speed and less interruption. In principle, we need to test. I like, especially I like, I literally like when the, the proposal is coming from referees and coaches together without any discussion <laughs> between yeah. them. Um, it looks nice because many times uh, ah, a lot of uh, one one team is asking for two minutes not to, to leave the ball. The other team and then is angry and then the, the atmosphere is not nice and could be could be interesting. But we need uh, we need to test. Yeah. Uh, the, the picture on the left side shows a little bit the situation. It was an attacker foul by, by the pivot in this exactly. situation, and the ball is on the way to the right side. To, exactly. So that is a, a, an example for this situation. So uh, interesting that this uh, uh, proposal is coming also from the coach's side, uh, Ramon. Uh, we, we are yeah. very astonished. Uh, uh, last year <laughs> uh, in, in Japan in the World Championship, uh, that one really famous coach, uh, yeah. the head coach from Norway, uh, uh, made this proposal. Yeah, you know the, the, the criteria that we have used and we have explained uh, in the last, uh, I think, 10 years at least, 10 years is that, uh, that uh, to consider a defender inside, clearly inside the goal area, it's uh, necessary that at least one foot must be complete complete inside goal area. There is a gray zone when the player is touching the six meter, the defender is touching the six meter line. But normally this is not enough to, to this for a decision of seven meters. Or we can destroy our our humble when uh, we should to, to, to whistle maybe the 50 or 55 or 60 times seven meters in a match. So that's the idea. Also at the same time, uh, this is an advice for the referees, please, Take care, maintain your concentration about the position of the defender when the defender is clear outside of the goal area. Please take care of the, what is the, 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 the position of the defender when there is the contact defender attacker. Because many times, many times, okay, sometimes the defender is clearly outside of the goal area. But one second, half a second after the contact, both players are inside the goal area. It is casually. The goal referee that is the responsible is not a fully concentration in the position of the defender. The decision is uh, run, run seven meters. And then, until now, this criteria is clear and is objective, objective and clear. Forget the mistakes of the human people. It's clear, clear, objective. But of course, we are ready to open uh, discussion and comments if we are able to find another different criteria, but also objective criteria, not subjective, objective criteria. I think this moment, not easy, but I'm reading. If this is good for Campbell, I'm reading, but not easy. Is on the table for discussion. Exactly. So, and then uh, a discussion since long years, we are thinking about uh, a new system with three referees. Uh, and, uh, uh, you know, uh, a lot of uh, other sports also at the end, football uh, changed uh, the system and rising mm -hmm. up the number of, of referees. So yeah. sure, it is a, a current discussion is possible to think about the third yes. or the fourth referee. Uh, yes. We are thinking about, but we need to test because this is a big yeah. change. Yes. Totally. Uh, it is a big jump. We are uh, we are talking about, about couples, 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 and then we will uh, we will discuss all referees, three referees from different countries, from different continents. Finish. Or could be two from one country or one continent. No, absolutely, it is a big change. 
and then we need a real uh, good good training. Today, the, all the IHL referees uh, they know they they they, they, are, they use the same criteria. So this is not a question of the I have different criteria. No, no, I have different personality. No, no, this is not a question for personality and criteria. Just uh, to find the best position to control all the situation, especially all the situation between six and nine meters, because this is the key today. This is our problems today, especially with two two big pivots, and then sometimes uh, two referees are not not enough. Also about the quick throw offs, like we discussed some some minutes ago, right? And then the question is the better observation and control and control of all situations to reduce the mistakes, to reduce the mistake during, during the match. And then I must tell you that the experience in Denmark, first experience in Denmark. We'll show now some some videos where were interesting, interesting. But uh, we are in the way to test if really this could be at least for top, top international matches could be a good good solution for yeah. for our. Hand. I think it's interesting to see the tests uh, in Denmark. I think uh, the tests in general was was positive no, from the yes, feedback. Yeah, it was interesting. Yeah, some seconds, eh? not uh, not to yeah. a lot of uh, a lot of time. Uh, you can go a little bit further. We can start here, for example, you know, for example, here. Two times 60 minutes. I take it back. And then there's a stat. As a Louise Burgård, Verona Christiansen. De sidder jo udenfor, og de, de, de deltager jo ikke rigtigt i det her, i hvert fald ikke, det er jo man... <laughs> Look, one possibility. Depends on the... Depends on the... On the tactics, on the attacker and the defender team. Could be. And for me important is the, the referee at the sideline. Eh? He can yeah. observe diagonal in the, exactly. in the defense, exactly. exactly between six and nine meters. That's a really important position. Okay. This could be another possibility. Depends. For example, if we uh, uh, they are using two pivots, for example, forget uh, the situation now in the match. <laughs> yes, only we are talking about ideas, eh? no possibilities. Or even the test in Denmark was about yeah. four referees. Sure, it's also a question of, uh, of communication, uh, which referee has yes. to uh, decide in some specific situations. But we had a good discussion with uh, with referees, uh, I think, from from basketball, and yes. Uh, yes. and for them, it's not so difficult. They were referees from basketball and the responsible yeah. referees from. From FIBA, Carl yeah. Jugeman. He was very happy to yeah. when uh, we explained the that we are thinking about this. Wow, come on, Dietrich, <laughs> come on. <laughs> okay, not uh, just uh, just some minutes. Okay, not not too many. Okay, good. So sure, this needs a lot of tests and preparation yeah. and, uh, and whatever and discussion at the end. Yeah. Yeah. Right. So coming to the end, what are the the next steps? Sure, we are in a discussion and uh, uh, we want to organize uh, uh, a close co communication to our top coaches. One idea is uh, in the next uh, months, round about end of August, to invite our top coaches uh, for a real uh, comprehensive discussion about some important uh, steps to develop our rules, also their opinion to other uh, uh, critical uh, situations in our game uh, that this we made before and in August I think that's uh, the next step. I think also interesting is to invite coaches uh, from the youth and junior area. I'm thinking a little bit about coaches especially which are responsible in the talent system in, in their federation. Uh, I think that are also they have a different view how to educate uh, players, what is uh, with the body contact, uh, what is uh, the one-on-one -on -one situations. And I think especially the, uh, the question of rule interpretations could be very important to discuss this with uh, yeah. this group. 
So then the test, you mentioned this, uh, will be in the next yes. season. Yes, we'll organize some tests in different countries in the, in the next season. If any of you are voluntary, please yes. be immediately be in contact with us, with IHF in your, in your country, and uh, we can uh, we can organize also in your country some some tests about these uh, new possibilities. Yeah, and sure, in the upcoming competitions, we will yeah. uh, continue the uh, analysis, also additional discussion uh, <laughs> with all target groups, coaches, referees, and whatever. Uh, then at the end, uh, the IHF working group will make the final work and the final mm -hmm. uh, draft. And important, mm -hmm. don't forget, the last de decision is by the IHF Congress uh, will be uh, in the November 2021. Correct. <laughs> and this means the next new rules we will have on the 1st of July 2022. Mm -hmm. So time enough, but a lot of work no and it's a not, lot of not, discussion no, not time enough no no. <laughs> no no it looks to two years but uh, no no the time uh, a lot a lot of work to do okay courtney i think a lot of questions and suggestions <laughs> uh yes okay so i will <laughs> <laughs> of notes i will try to go in some themes yeah so let's focus on questions about goalkeeper things first. So, okay, the first one, someone mentioned a proposal to um, eliminate the center throw off completely. And the once a goal is scored, the game restarts with the goalkeeper throwing to their team. Mm. Uh, can mm. you? The, yeah, test, I, uh, the yeah, tests yeah. in the past were not successful. <laughs> and it I could know. be a big change. Eh? Could be. Yeah. Uh, I know this. Uh, uh, um, this proposal we discussed also in 1997. I remember uh, sure. the uh, the IHF uh, coaches and referees symposium 1995 in Egypt. We yes. had a demonstration, also for this uh, proposal. So it is a long discussion in in the training. Uh, coaches uses this very often. That is clear. But uh, think about what we discussed uh, uh, about the capacity of observation for the referees. Also, uh, in the current the system, uh, system with two referees, this could be too much for the referees, uh, uh, for their observation task uh, and for all movements and whatever. Uh, we must be careful with this. And the, the limit, the line, or the limit between the high speed match or crazy speed match could be dangerous. Yeah. <laughs> could be dangerous. I think that uh, this uh, first, uh, this could be the first step, this uh, new idea. If it's successful, we will see. But uh, the question is to, in, to improve the speed and the rhythm, but without uh, chaos, without mm -hmm. chaos. Um, okay, then another one about goalkeepers is, um, well, someone asked, should to help protect the goalkeepers should they wear masks or something should we have some protective equipment no i'm not doctor but uh, any mask protect the goalkeeper any mask protect the goalkeeper and anybody this is the first because the impact is a uh, 100 or 120 kilometers per hour what kind of mask like american football but we cannot get the idea that the handball is dangerous sport because and then no children i prefer my my boys and my kids they, they play uh, chess or ballet but not handball if this is so dangerous that uh, you need this uh, protector like uh, American football and just a normal uh, normal protector this is nothing about the rules we can we have discussed with um, for example with Matt Olson for example yeah. Yeah. so in any case I mentioned this uh, in the presentation education yeah. is a better way <laughs> yeah, uh, that's the thrower correct. is responsible right from the beginning in your state yeah. okay and in that uh, category also if you talk about shooters being punished for hitting the goalkeeper um, in the face or something, where is the line with this? If a goalkeeper is going low and the shooter is shooting down to the corner, how to decide when the shooter is punished? And I think the videos were very clear. The videos were very clear. And we need a test, we need a test, but in principle, no line. Yeah. And, uh, uh... Uh, don't uh, don't forget. Uh, uh, we discussed it also with Mats. Also, no goalkeeper will do this intentionally. No, never. 
No, no. So this was a clear remark from Mats. Yeah. Never, absolutely not. Yeah. Uh, okay. Uh, someone asked about the seven meter throw. Should we introduce timing for this? Say the table official has a stopwatch to count three seconds to make sure the player is releasing the ball within three seconds. No, in the past uh, some years, um, at, until 2010, I think, uh, was a mandatory time out in all seven meters, but we decided that it uh, cannot be possible. What uh, we are working with the referee is not allowed, not allowed that uh, the thrower lose the time. This is clear. First time is uh, uh, we have seen the uh, first time uh, we have seen and the last uh, world championship. First time to say clear advice and second time could be an scandal. Yeah. No, not at all. Um, okay. Uh, someone asked about the increase in red cards that you talked about, um, and I think this is uh, interesting uh, for you because they said, "Isn't this partly?" the coach and players are more responsible, their behavior is more responsible. Um, <coughs> yeah, uh, just how important is this? Do you think this is a very important thing to help some of the things we're talking about, like the increase in red cards in 2019, the referees are trying to control, but maybe the players and coaches are not approaching in the right way. Yeah, we, uh, you remember what we said uh, uh, to the problem with uh, overreactions uh, uh, and provocations né? at the end that the responsibility is by the players and also by the coaches. That, 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 that's very clear. And I think in the future, in the future, and uh, this is my, my opinion, it is more and more important that we teach uh, also younger players in a better way in the individual defense, how to avoid suspensions sometimes how to avoid interruptions where it is not necessary from the tactical side. So I'm, I'm sure uh, the tactical education, we have, we have a lot of possibilities in the tactical education, especially of our players in the individual and cooperative defense behavior. So, and this means also to avoid not necessary, I always said stupid fouls. Mm. Uh, Let, let and, some, and, some, and, and sometimes, uh, sorry, and sometimes, yes. you know, what's always the goalkeeper uh, said, please give me a chance, let him sh uh, shooting and I will make the solution. No, so don't forget. <laughs> Let me to add something. Uh, before yesterday, one of our top referees, Andreu Marin, told me something about the book, the book of the history of uh, Kobe Bryant. Kobe Bryant, he was not handball player, he was a basket player, we know him. And Kobe Bryant, in his book, I have the photos and I, I, I work in the next uh, trainer's courses and, and referee courses with this idea. With this idea, no, I saw the words of uh, Kobe Bryant. And Kobe Bryant discovered that uh, he studies every day the rules of the game in basket to take benefit in his movements. Mm. First, this is clear. But he, for me, it was a surprise because normally the players, they don't know the rules in general. And Kobe Bryant, number one, maybe the best, best basketball player in the world in, in each time. He, I studied the rules every week to improve my training and then my matches. And then I, 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 I win benefit of this idea. And this is, this is the idea. Mm -hmm. And second was that uh, he told that uh, my relation with the referees was, also, was always excellent. I was able, in, even in uh, in hot moments, to discuss with them. Okay. Yeah. So, don't forget this 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 idea. Yeah, I think that's one really important thing that everyone needs to understand is that, yeah. as you've been saying, it's also everyone is involved in this. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, okay. Speaking of basketball, um, the shot clock. <laughs> you spoke about this already, but people did ask. Um, uh, someone asked, how did you decide that a 45, like that a shot clock would not have a positive impact? Why, why is it, why has it been decided that that is not a positive thing? No, this is a clear observation. Uh, uh, if we are going to 45 seconds, sure, the, the game uh, will be slower. Then you are playing in 
sure in some minutes uh, in, in the game to the end of these 45 uh, seconds. That, that is clear. Also, on the other side, uh, the defense tries to interrupt, to interrupt, to interrupt, to reach mm -hmm. this 45 seconds. And then we are immediately in a discussion about progressive punishments. And, and we cannot use a specific rule which has an influence also in other rules, also in punishments in basketball. We mm -hmm. cannot copy this one mm -hmm. against one to our handball. Then we have to change a lot of more in our, our rules. And that makes no, 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 no sense from our side. We have a clear opinion about this. Yes, in basketball, they can have a time, but, but one player could be the 20 or 24 seconds just bouncing the ball during 20 or 24 yes. seconds. Yes. And this is not yes. passive play. We have yes. passive play. And then they are absolutely about this is absolutely different sports and maybe it's interesting for people who don't know that we did have the head of FIBA refereeing with us at the yeah. men's world championship yes. last yeah. year now, i don't know if you spoke to him about specific yeah. rules or whether it was more about how to handle the referee side but you have been in collaboration with FIBA. yes yes, yes. 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 Yeah. Um, it's very useful yeah mm -hmm. Yeah, very interesting. Also for them, eh? not only for us. Yeah, also yeah. for them. Yeah. Well, <laughs> Mr. Carl, Carl Jungerman, uh, he learned yeah. a lot about Hamas. <laughs> Much more interesting for him, I think. Yeah. <laughs> um, okay, let's talk about the throw off. Um, so, uh, someone asked if the throw off area increases, um, doesn't it become a bit difficult for the defenders to have space to run back without? fearing punishment for interrupting. Yeah, yeah this, is, this is one, one uh, critical uh, point. Yes, we discussed it also. So th the question is at first the size uh, of, of the area. Uh, we made <coughs> uh, some pre-tests, let me say, and uh, I think Ramon 3.5 meter, I think that could be the solution. Also for the test, I think. Yeah. This has been. We must admit that this. We can organize tests with 3.5, with 4, and with 4.5. I yeah. think normally it should be between 3.5 and 4. No more. Yeah, I, I think, think this so. is the yeah. this is the feeling. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. Um, yeah. We okay. Are we are, oh yes, sir. We are in overtime. <laughs> <laughs> I know, but there's, there's so many questions and they're still coming. So, um, okay, good. Yeah, okay, maybe, we keep yeah going maybe, going. yeah, I think that is for, for us is very useful to have a lot of questions. Maybe it's not possible to dis discuss all ideas and proposals today, but uh, I think we will receive all, all uh, ideas, proposals, and uh, uh, Ramon, we will make a comment and okay. give also a feedback uh, back about this. Maybe also a, a bigger article in the, uh, on okay. the IHF website. Uh, I think that is a really an interesting topic, and we need a really good discussion worldwide. And that was an idle chance today. Uh, so cool. maybe we will also create a summary about this. Yes. yes. Um, well, we can do a few more. Or yeah. yeah. Um, well, uh, somebody asked about some kind of beach handball rules. Um, what about if a game ends in a draw, introducing two minutes? What about specialist attackers who can, their goals can count for more? What about two points for Kung Fu goal? These kinds of things. What do you think about these elements? Or why are they in beach handball and why do we keep that different? And uh, in IHF, you know, we have, uh, we have a special group about beach handball that they manage all the topics. And then I'm not able to discuss about the rules of beach handball because they are really, really experts. And then I, I, I like, but, but I'm, not, uh, I'm not the responsible of the, of the referees and rules in beach handball. Uh, I think this question, maybe in the future, we can organize something some, like, like some workshop or seminar about beach handball could be a good idea. But uh, then but, I prefer don't answer. Let's not... <laughs> yeah, but, uh, but for me, it's important uh, uh, it's also to, to, to look too much to other sports. Uh, it's also sometimes not good. And we have this nice beach handball game and we have our nice uh, indoor handball game. And to mix some ideas or rules, I think that is not a good idea. No, not good. No, never ever a good idea. No, no, no not good. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Each well, games have a special profile and yeah. we have to promote this profile. 
Um, okay, there are still so many questions coming. <laughs> Everybody, as Dietrich just said, we won't be able to, um, yeah. we, won't, we won't be able to address everything, uh, but we are trying to note everything and continue to deliver on the content that you're asking about. Um, but let me see if there's just something else very interesting. Um, Well, I, maybe just this more general question. Uh, someone asked about the IHF approach to helping raise the standard of refereeing in some countries where, or regions where it's not so strong. For example, a big country like India, um, someone wrote that we don't have any IHF referee from India. Um, can we talk a bit about how the IHF tries to, well, I mean, this is one example, I suppose, how the IHF is trying to help okay. these referees, but... Um... Like normally, normally IHF uh, or PRC is in contact with the, with the referees commission in the continent, and normally the continents have a clear, uh, clear control of the refereeing area in all the nations in each continent. But also there are sometimes we are in direct contact with the national federation with a special project. For example, a special project now USA with IHF, China and IHF. And I, I'm sure and I'm sure not we approve, I think in the last uh, council also to organize a special, a special project about referees and other topics with India. With India. Also about coaches, right? The, the yeah, it's the same. Yeah, we have uh, uh, some uh, uh, concrete development projects with, with big countries, uh, so called big countries, uh, that is China, that is USA, sure, this is uh, uh, India. So, and in these uh, uh, development projects, also uh, <laughs> we focus to all important target groups, so referees, coaches, and whatever, yeah. delegates, for example. Okay, uh, yeah, there, there, are, there are so many questions still coming, but I, I think we should maybe wrap up here and everyone, we, we tried to get to as many questions as we can, but uh, as we said, we're, there's plenty more education coming and more sessions like this. So we do want to address everything. We just yeah. can't, we don't have uh, time capacity uh, today. Uh, so I think we can end there. If you have anything else to add? Ramon, you start. Okay, yeah, from my side, uh, and then finally we have reached the, the end of this, this first uh, IHC online symposium for coaches, referees, and many other people are humble. And don't forget that this seminar has uh, served as uh, at the beginning of the, of the IHC Virtual Academy, and a new, new uh, in, innovative uh, worldwide education for coaches, referees, delegates, teachers, and humble fans, right? Uh, I know that uh, all humble people have now, uh, I think, high, high, high quality material at their disposal to raise the quality, to improve the quality of the trainings of the matches, and also for the referees in all the world to, to know exactly what uh, should be the, the, the only referee line in all kinds of competition. Let me to say to, to remind that I'm very happy that some of our uh, <clears throat> current top 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 IHA referees have shown here in this uh, in this uh, symposium that uh, they are able uh, not only to do more things that they just simple be referees. They have explained clearly why they whistle, when they whistle, under which criteria they whistle. Also, when it's better to whistle uh, or not to whistle, saving unnecessary interruption. And then now are some concepts, some concepts as uh, movements or positions or body language, flow, flow, progressive line, uh, passive play, of course, offensive foul, last 30 seconds, empty goal. All these concepts now are more familiar and understandable for many humble people, not only for the referees worldwide. What means that now is a little bit easier to, to, to discuss each other about humble. I think also good information also for and help for media people, TV, newspaper, journalists, social nets, to know better the, the IHF criteria and how especially IHF is working with, the, with our referees during all the year, not only during top events. And, 
thanks again to Dietri because of our good cooperation, both commissions, I think have been the, the key of the success, one of the keys of the success of this, of this symposium. And don't forget all of you that uh, you can see, you can see again on demand and slowly all the 20, 20 presentations, 20 lectures in the, I think in the YouTube IHF channel and also in the IHF education tent. There are many things to be here, of course, to be continued. Yes, of course, and uh, this is my part. Uh, that was not the end. That was mm. only the beginning of a really uh, good idea. In the next uh, weeks, uh, especially, we will uh, develop at first the technical platform of the education center, uh, going more and more to an e-learning platform to also we will uh, organize in the future this year uh, uh licensed coaches courses uh, so that is really a, a big step forward for ihf but uh, we also want to continue this idea to organize online symposiums uh, worldwide free for everyone uh, maybe in the next steps uh, for special target groups and i will give you some ideas for this uh, about the upcoming program in our virtual academy this is uh, the next idea ihf children's handball week Sure, it's coming next week. Here uh, you see uh, the, the program it will be from the 17th uh, of August, uh, running one week each day, one uh, topic from our uh, experts, especially from the handball at school uh, area. The main idea is uh, how we can promote uh, uh, handball in the age of six to 12 years, what we can do also in different continents, the situation in, in Africa and in Asia is different to Europe. So what we can do, we will have a focus uh, worldwide. I think that is uh, really a good idea and also a good proposal uh, that we will uh, focus in the future also to uh, specific target groups. One idea also is uh, to focus more on the de development of our youth handball, eh? to organize uh, a symposium uh, for youth coaches, for talent training. So that is also in our focus for the next steps. But this is in August, the concrete uh, next uh, uh, symposium. And then don't forget, we also uh, work at the same time uh, on on-demand online seminars and uh, Ramon, uh, also in a good cooperation between CCM and PSC, we produced uh, in the last months uh, five new uh, really high quality <coughs> online seminars uh, on demand. And uh, they're already coming in the uh, at the beginning of August. Go to the education center, then you will find this new uh, online seminars. Only a, a quick overview. Max Olson will speak about goalkeeping, the mental game, a really fundamental presentation, really nice. Have a look for this. Ramon, you must explain your own <laughs> online <laughs> yes. seminar. Yes, a critical attacker fouls, criteria for attacker fouls, and his uh, the relation with the provocation and overreaction. Just to show to all humble people, how negative, negative tendencies is uh, this uh, last uh, fashion provocation or overreaction cannot be. Uh, all together, all together, not only referees and the rules, all together uh, must uh, think in this situation and must uh, destroy or cut this tendency immediately as soon as possible. Yeah. And also more for the referee side, uh, I think it's also a really good idea that we use our best top referees uh, to give uh, to, to, to share their experience for yeah. a, a lot of uh, important topics here, body language. I think Ramon also a very important information. Uh, yes, for all referees is, uh, worldwide. Yes, yes, this is the key of modern referee style uh, to give uh, with, uh, to show with your body language, not only not only shouting and clear information, what about your decision, about your criteria, about the situation in the match. And the clear, uh, this is improved first the information and second, the relation, the relation with the other actors that are the players and the coaches. And also at the same time, it's good information for spectators. Yeah. And also the next uh, uh, IH, our IHF uh, athletic coach coaches, I think this was also a big step uh, forward since uh, some years that we work together with uh, our IHF athletic coaches. 
Yes, of course, clearly with the high, high risk, high speed of our mother and Tom Humble, the referees need to, to show their best, best physical shape. And, and then they are, as I repeat again, they are like uh, real, real professionals without without being professional. And then the, the help of the of our athletic coaches, Dani Arinho and Sergio Durun has been uh, fundamental to prepare as a group and individually, planning for every one of the IHRF. So to, uh, and then the, you, you can see easily the general uh, uh, performance, physical <laughs> performance of the referees, if we compare with the, just only six, seven years ago and today. And in this uh, online seminar, you find a, a lot, lot yeah. of practical advices uh, um, how you can uh, prepare uh, exactly. yourself as an uh, as a referee. So, and also be, the uh, last uh, is important for to, uh, nutrition. Yes, nutrition because nutrition is a part fundamental of athlete, of a sportman, of sport woman. It's a part fundamental. Like to not only just running or jumping or race, no, no, just what about my, my food, about nutrition? Because here there is, a, we know, we know many cases of famous athletes that uh, they are not a good uh, performance because of nutrition, because of wrong, wrong nutrition, wrong food. So also uh, Sergi Sendrun uh, is helping to each uh, one of the referees. Uh, sometimes uh, with a general ideas and sometimes with specific ideas for everyone. And these two seminars are interesting, not only for IHRA, for all the referees around the world. Yeah. Okay, so that are the, the upcoming uh, program. And sure, we will continue. Yeah. Thanks a lot to all. Thank you. Thanks. All right. So that brings us to the end of the first IHF Live Online Symposium. I hope that this has been very informative for everyone. We are very happy with all the positive feedback we've received. And as you can see, there is plenty more content already available on the IHF Education Center, but also much more coming and also more of these live online educational seminars on the way. So just watch this space and we will be seeing you again very soon. I would just like to say thank you to the whole IHF team working behind the scenes here. Um, everyone with the technical side and also all of our translators who have done an amazing job and all of our lectures for our lecturers for their very interesting presentations. Thank you again, everyone for joining us and we will see you soon. And thank you, Courtney. Thank you, Courtney. Excellent, excellent job. Thank you yes. very much. <laughs> okay, bye. Okay, bye. bye.